if we've not met before. My name's Derm, uh, I'm a motivational coach. I've got a story for you, and if you'd like to consider this as story time with Derm, then please feel free to do so. I did this originally for kids, but I do think us adults could learn a thing or two from it as well. And if you're sitting comfortably, I shall begin. This is the story of Casper the cart horse. Casper was a very young, very proud, very strong cart horse who delivered lots of things every day to all sorts of places, including the very famous race course. But in spite of being a very good cart horse, Casper wasn't happy because every day when Casper came to the famous race course, he saw all the racehorses, the big, strong, proud racehorses that could gallop so, so, so fast. And Casper was desperate to be a racehorse. One day, when Casper was at the racehorse, he was there a little early this particular day for some reason, and his goods were loaded, and he had a little bit of time, and he saw Mr. McWinley. Now, Mr. McWinley was the most famous race horse trainer in the whole world. The most successful and the most famous. And as he had a little bit of time to spare, Casper got all his courage up and he walked over to Mr. McWinley and he said, hi, I'm Casper and I am desperate to be a race horse. Will you please train me? Mr. McWinley took one look at Casper and he looked him dead in the eyes and he said, Casper, you can't turn a cart horse into a racehorse. It's as simple as that, Casper. You are a cart horse. These are world famous racehorses. I'm sorry, as good a trainer as I am, I cannot turn a cart horse into a racehorse. Now, Casper wasn't happy with that because Casper had a passion and Casper was desperate to be a racehorse because he knew he was a very strong cart horse and he just felt he could run just as fast as all the racehorses. This was a turning point in Casper's life because Casper was desperate to be a racehorse. Casper was desperate to be something better than a cart horse or what he thought was better than a cart horse. And on his way out of the course that day, he was approached by Mr. Newby. Now, Mr. Newby was a new trainer. Mr. Newby hadn't conformed to all the rules that everybody understood about what kind of horses could do what and where. And Mr. Newby said, Casper, I will train you and I will train you to be faster. Now, Casper was delighted with that because as much as he wanted Mr. McWinley, because Mr. McWinley was very famous, Casper was just at that point happy to have anybody who was prepared to spend some time with him and to get him to be his very best. So, weeks upon weeks, and maybe even months upon months, Casper trained very hard. He did his work every day, he delivered to the course, and every day he turned up with Mr. Newby, and every day he galloped, and he galloped for miles, and he got faster, he got fitter, he got stronger. He got so good that one day Mr. Newby said to him, you know what, Casper? There's a big race on the downs next week, and I think I'm going to enter you. Well, as you can imagine, Casper was delighted with that. Casper was jumping up and down because this was his opportunity to prove that a cart horse could be a racehorse. Casper was absolutely overjoyed. So the big day came, and on the world famous race course, where one of the biggest races in the world was held, Casper was there lining up with all the other racehorses. The big, strong racehorses, and Casper looked around, and he was, he was a little bit intimidated because he could see how strong these other horses were. But Casper was strong, because Casper had trained very, very hard. The race started and off they went, galloping really fast, and Casper was there. Casper was up amongst all the other horses. He was looking right, he was looking left. He was in with the other horses. Casper was there running with some of the best race horses in the world and he was keeping up and he thought he was doing so well and he was actually doing so very well until they came round the bend into the home straight. 
Casper at that point was maybe lying third or fourth. And Casper thought, I'm in with a chance here. I could even win this. But coming down the home straight, the superior strength of the racehorses showed. And one by one, they overtook Casper. And the big strong horses took off. And they galloped to the finish. And I can't even remember who, who won that race. And Casper can't even really remember who won that race. But he came across the line and there were two important things here. The first one is that Casper had actually taken part in a race. Casper had been with some of the biggest, strongest racehorses in the world. And for a while, he actually held his own. For a while, he kept up with these guys. And he was not dejected. He was disappointed because he really thought at one point he might actually win the race, but he was not dejected and he was actually quite pleased. Mr. McWingley came over and he looked Casper in the face and he said, Casper, you've proved something here. You might not be able to turn a cart horse into a racehorse, but my, you can get a cart horse to run faster. And my, you can get a cart horse to keep up with all the others around him. And my, you can get a cart horse to do better than he ever thought might have been possible. And you know what, Casper? I think you might just be the fastest cart horse in the whole world. And that pleased Casper. Now the point of the story is that you might not like Casper be one of the best. You might not like Casper have all the tools that is necessary to be the best, but you can always be the best you can be. And that is exactly what Casper did. Casper wanted to be a racehorse. Casper trained every day to be a racehorse. Casper took part in a big race. And for a while, Casper kept up with all the other horses, some of the best in the world. But at the end of it, Casper could honestly say, he was the very best that he could have been. And you know what? He may just have been the fastest cart horse in the whole world.